I remember a player coming in, Carlos Tevez, in a transfer window. Ooh. What was he like to work with? What was that like with players coming through? And what's it like now in a change room as a current player during transfer window? Uh, we got to move on to you because your story is like one, almost like one of a kind now. A one club man. Such a big club and it's got such a great fan base. But when it's not going well and they're not happy, they'll let you know. And, He's um... not lying. He's not lying. <laughs> what was the closest you came to being tempted away? Declan Rice, um, you've mentioned him. I think he's took his game to the next level now. I think I think he proved that in the Euros, especially in the final. I think you I thought for 75 minutes he was the best player on the pitch. England, they were a good number of years where you was in the form of your life. And your name was tied about to get in the England squads. How do you feel about it? And do you feel you deserved an opportunity? Yeah, I, I think I think I deserved an opportunity. Sulking. So, so, so they can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League He's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is Vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know this Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And a massive shout out to our sponsors, Sokin. Listen, man, we love transferring the money across the globe. Sokin, also sponsors for Arsenal, Everton, AS Monaco and Fulham. Make sure you stay tuned. We've got competitions. Make sure you click the link in the description, download the app and follow them on socials. Sokin. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for a special segment of Vibe with Five. We've got in myself, Joel Bayer, Stephen Housen, Rio Ferdinand, and Mr. West Ham, Mr. Mark Noble. How you doing? You good? Good, mate. How are you? Doing great, thank you. Rio, start us off, please. Listen, man, transfer window. We can't start this without talking about transfer window. We'll get back to you in a minute, personally. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember a player coming in, Carlos Tevez, in a transfer window. Ooh. What was he like to work with? What was that like, players coming through? And what's it like now in a change room as a current player during transfer window? Well, I start with Tevez. Um when he come in, it was uh, him and obviously Mascarano. And you know what? He was, you know how good he was and I know, but I don't think a lot of people before that knew how quite how good he was. Mm. Um, what a player, uh, what a character. Um, obviously didn't speak a lot of good English, but, <laughs> but he was, he was great around the lads. Uh, some of the, some of the, some of the skills and, uh, but for me, it was the West Ham fans loved him because of how he worked. Mm. Um, and how he pressed and how he chased the ball and um it, it, any player that signs for West Ham you say if you if you work hard you run tackle and chase down a, a corner or a throw in you know what it's like there you get a big cheer and um that's why he was idolized and then I think for that um I think he loved the fans back and he he loved his time there and obviously for us it was a real shame to lose him but I think um after a few months of him playing for us we knew he wasn't going to be with us for long so to, to fast forward now and look at the way that the transfer window is loads of movement. We can see today there's been lots of movement at Bamiyang um, to name one. West Ham, we've seen they've had bids for people like Calvin Phillips, Rafinha turned down. What's that like for you as a player in that change room and how, how are you guys reacting to all this? Um, for for us, obviously, we we I'm, I'm pretty close with the manager, so we, we talk about players coming in and out and what he said from day one is um, he's not going to bring players in for the sake of it. Um, he wants to improve the team and improve the squad. And if you can't get the right player, he ain't going to bring someone in. That's, that's a waste of money, if you know what I mean, because I think we have done that in the, in the past. Um, not saying players are a waste of money, but it hasn't quite worked. It hasn't been the right character or the right player for the for the football club. And um, I think that with, with the players the manager brought in, um, you see, they've worked and 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 they've and they've gelled with the squad. Um, so I, I think if it, if it doesn't work out, if we don't if we don't get the players that we want, then we'll stick with what we've got and and uh, reinforce in in the summer. Did you think that Jesse would have come back after he had a fantastic mm. spell with you guys? I thought he was at not, like shooing to come back. You'd have wanted him back there as well, no? Yeah, I mean, for for us, he he was he surprised me to be honest uh, with what a great lad he was and. Uh, not only that, but a top, top footballer. You see in the first training session how, how technically good he was. Um, I didn't think he was going to be that good, to be honest, with the goals he scored and what he created for the team. Um, 
but it's a tough situation, you know, when you're when you've got six months left at a club like Manchester United. He's been there all his life, and um, they've let obviously Martial go now, and uh, Van der Beek, and um, and all the the stuff that's gone on with Mason Greenwood in in, in the press lately. So um, whether he'll come to us, we've still got a few hours yet. We don't know. So hopefully um, we can get a deal done for Jesse. Listen, that's a transfer window. We've got to move on to you because your story is like one, almost like one of a kind now. A one club man, um, grew up at West Ham as a kid. What, what's it been like going through that them stages, the process of becoming a, a player at a club that you've been born at, you've you've supported since a baby? Uh, really, it's been there's been times where it's obviously <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> and there's been times where you see at home and you want to cry because of you. You, you try you just try so hard to affect everything but it's sometimes it's out of your control and um when when it's been going well it, it's great because um what the, the club and the, it's such a big club and it's got such a great fan base but when it's not going well and they're not happy they'll let you know and it's um, not lying it's not lying <laughs> and 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 when listen when you're the captain of a football club or even not when you, you support the club and you, you're playing for a team that you you grew up supporting as a kid um you have them feed them extra feelings where you want to do so well for the for the supporters and mm. uh for, for the, even for the for the football club himself um but it has been tough at times but you, i've always said you know after a loss or a bad season you lace up your boots and you go again and you gotta <clears throat> try and inspire the players around you to 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 do the same as you and um it's been it's been great the last two years even though i haven't played as much but it's um for me, it's been an incredible time because um, you're winding down your career and, and you're seeing the boys play good football and you're a part of that, <clears throat> part of a European campaign, which is mm. which has been fantastic. So, um, but yeah, at times it's been tough. Let's take it back to the beginning because we've got a lot of people that watch this who are very young and all aspiring players or just want to know that journey in a bit more detail. When you was a kid coming through the ranks, was you one of the ones that was always highly thought of or was you one that was clinging on to being at the club and just trying to stay in there and then all of a sudden it changed for you at some point? No, not really. For me, I was um, I was always one of the best players um, and always playing up age groups and um, I had a lot of hype about me as a kid and... But I wasn't really like that. I just enjoyed playing football, to be honest. And uh, you don't you, you don't think about that as a kid. I just wanted to play for West Ham and uh, and get into the first team. And there was times, you know, where you don't play play well. And I, I tell all young boys in the academy, you you can't play well every week. Mm. <clears throat> it's not possible. Um, and there's games what are not going to suit your game. I was speaking to one of the young boys the other day, and he was really upset because he plays he plays as a number 10 and he couldn't get on the ball and the players couldn't find him through the lines and all that stuff and i was like well you got you got to be able to adapt to become the best second ball player in the team you know like get get on knockdowns and um because you all games are different you're never going to have the same game and it's learning learning little things like that as a kid that that holds you in good stead to become a first team player because i've played under i think nine or ten different managers now and different cultures and uh, different tactics, different ways of playing. If you can't adapt your game, then um, if you get a manager come in that does well and and he doesn't like the way you play, you, you know better than anyone. Really, you end up you end up moving, you end up mm. going. And um, have you but, had that where you, you managers come in in your time and and other than at the moment now because you're not playing because of the reason you stated being in yeah. your career, have you had managers in them time at the club where you haven't been first choice and you have thought, listen, it might not work here. To be honest, not really. I, 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 when people say to me, like, Mark, you've been at West Ham for so long and what you, you, the games you've played in and the Premier League games, what's your biggest achievement? And for me, one of them is playing under nine different managers and always playing. You know, you don't you don't get to play five, what, over 500 games for a club when if you're not playing seasons here and there because you're not picked. So um, I've, I've played under, obviously... People like Gianfranco, Gianfranco Zola, Sam Allardyce, Slavon Bilic, and, um, and and different cultures and different ways of playing. And for me, one of the proudest things is being able to adapt to that style of football. Mm -hmm. um, when when uh, when we got relegated under Avram and and Big Sam come in, you know, I thought, oh, maybe he, he ain't gonna uh, like the way I play, or 
because you have this rumour. But Sam was incredible. He was like, Mark, just, I just need you to get on the ball for me and make us play. And he, he's got his way of playing, of course. And um, But for me, it was one of the most enjoyable seasons because he wanted the play to go through me. Um, so I, I, I was constantly on the ball. So it was a, it was a, and he wanted me to play longer passes, obviously play, not, not kick it long. Yeah. But, but play passes in, not, not I'm not, not like skulls he did, but in that sort of way Listen, where, don't, yeah. you can be, you can be, no, 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 like because that, you could play, man. Don't yeah, worry, no, no, no I, I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is, is he wanted to hit the wired men and I'm playing behind for, because we had such a good squad at the time, uh, in the championship that, um, he wanted me to do that and then that carried on for three or four years in the Premier League after um, after we got promoted. Um, I was doing some reading up and I found out that you actually started off at Arsenal Academy. Um, interesting because at that time... As an Arsenal fan, by the way. Uh, yeah. At the time, like obviously, you know, we've got a great reputation. Obviously, West Ham come calling, you go running. What's that based on, man? Because we all know we were on top back then, man. <laughs> <laughs> um do you want to know the truth? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Uh, I, my time at Arsenal when I was a young kid, I, I loved it. The problem I had was I was from East London, and my dad worked, and training was at Highbury. Mm. Um, I don't know whether you've ever tried to get from East London to Highbury at four o'clock in the it's afternoon. Long. Yeah, mm. long, and it wasn't fair. I was, I was, I was late, and um, I was getting changed in a car and eating in a car, and um, but they was great with me. They wanted me to stay. Um, thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Um, but it wasn't right because I was spending three, four hours a night in the car. Um, so my contract was up. Uh, when I say contract, I'm a, I was a young kid at the time. So, but um, West Ham obviously because they knew I was a West Ham fan and I played against them many, many times, and they they was desperate for me to sign there. Um, I went for a, uh, I went I went to actually watch. And uh, I think they played like Peterborough or someone. And I think it was like 9-0. And you know, Chrissy Cohen at the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a top player. Um, had a great career, obviously, at Forest. And uh, I used to look at him and think, oh, my God, he's so good. Like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to play in this team. <laughs> That's how I felt at the time. Um, but signed. And, uh, yeah, the, obviously, the rest is history. I had some, uh, had a great youth team there um, and, uh, and really enjoyed it. You mentioned playing with, like, under loads of different managers, which is amazing. I think one of the names that stuck out to me was Gianfranco Zola. Now, one of my mates, Zavon Hines, he said that he trained, well, obviously he's played on Elite Zola and apparently in training, he was an yeah, absolute so I see Sav yesterday, actually, and mm. we was having a chat. He, he takes, I think, the 14s or the 15s. Mm. And, uh, I, I, and this is this is serious. We, we were struggling at the time and we had a, we had a lot of injuries and... Uh, I think me and Scotty Parker said to him, because he was so good in training, he was so fit, like we said, like you might have to like sign up for a player as in the manager because he was wow. that good, Reed. Really. Like wow. the, the first the first training session he, he, he obviously watched for a while and then he, he joined in one session and then the ball the ball got slapped into him and he, his first touch was like, as you know, he's incredible. And then he he chipped Robert Green <laughs> from just outside the box. He did. And it was like the lads were like, oh, mate, that was like yeah. special. Yeah. And then the, the, the further the season went on, we were struggling. We just said to him, look, why don't you why don't you sign up as a player? You can come on the last 20 minutes and create something. Well, you said something. it seriously, Jim. Yeah. No, this was a serious yeah, right. it was a, was a, He was that good, mate, I swear to you. Um, he was still fit as anything, ripped to shreds. Um, <clears throat> but Gianfranco is the sort of guy that was sort of embarrassed by that. Do you know what I mean? Like he was, he was quite shy as a person. Um, but we were serious. Like it was that good. We were serious. Lucky enough, we escaped, and uh, Scotty scored a fantastic goal to to keep us up. Um, but what a, what a lovely man! What, a, heard, what a top top guy! I heard balls were coming from. In yeah, the honestly, air. he was one time. He was he was really madness. Good. But madness. you never like, Jam Franco. You never you never lose that ability. You know, with a ball, you you don't lose that. Like you lose your legs and you lose explosiveness and all that. But he still had. He still had so much, uh, uh, like so much quality with the ball. Rio's beat, Rio's out here beating people at two touch when he goes around a different <laughs> stage. So it's true. Uh, do you know what? This, it, the, the mad with two touch because you ain't got to really move, have you? No, so you yeah. got to run. Exactly. It's the best game. Even the young lads now, you school them because you're so good at your, your first touch is so good. Um, but you ain't got to run. So as soon as you have to start running and doing this, different, different. I know, I know Steve's trying to get in. Go on, one Steve. more quickly. For me, 
uh, while you're, your time at West Ham, all the years you've been there, what, what was your most enjoyable time there? Forget now, obviously. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, do you know what? Like, there's there's two that stand out for me. There, there was the first season when I got in the team. Who was there then? It, it was Pards. Um, and I, 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 I started playing. And, uh, you know, like, really, I was doing things I didn't even know I could do myself. It was just <laughs> adrenaline, you know, <laughs> like, just like flicking over people's heads and eating volleys from like 30 yards and um, like just playing like through balls. And I was thinking, after, yeah, because you go from like, I went from playing up to like, I think it was like 17s, 19s then because mm. I was playing with your brother. And then I play like in an under, uh, the, like an under 19s game when I was like 16 and do a couple of skills. And I could tell I was starting to get like a little bit of respect from the older players. And then we played in a FA Youth Cup and I was just got in the first team at the time training with him and I was I was still young and we was losing we was losing 2 0 to Gillingham away or someone, um, or Peterborough, one I can't remember, one of them teams. And and I and I come on because I played the day before and I come on and uh scored at trick, uh, a free kick, a penalty, I won the penalty and scored it, and then um I chipped the goalie as well. And I remember Peter Grant, Alan Pardew's assistant, come up to me in the dressing room after. And he was like, um, we was always obviously buzzing because we was 2 0 down and we come back and won. And he pulled me and he was like, it's the last time you ever play at this level. Wow. Man. And I was like, confidence. Yeah, I was like buzzing. Like, because, and then next next day, I, I had a locker in the, in the, in the, in the first team change room. So and that's how quick it can change for like, a young player. Really, so a day, a day. Like, and I say to the young boys now, I say, when they're like 16 and, uh, and I'm watching them train, and you say to them, Lads, like you don't realize how close you are. Mm. Like that is so close. At sixteen, you maybe I know it's a little bit harder now, but within two years, you you could be playing in the Premier League. You know, mm. like it's, and it happens that quick. And 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 from then, uh, I trained with the first team, and then um, Pards was like, he called me in his office, and he's like, I'm, "You're going to play. Like I, mm. I can't I can't hold you back. You're going to play." And then and it was I was I was doing as I said I was doing things that I didn't know I could do. And then at half time. We'd come in at half time, we'd have fully experienced pros in the dressing room. Okay. And Pards is like, we had like, um, obviously, Nyad, you, you, your brother, and um, had like Malky Mackay, and all like, that's how old I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and he'd be like, uh, just give notes the ball, give notes the ball, just keep feeding him. Wow. And, Do you know, yeah, as confidence. a young kid, you're like, that's what Pards was unreal at, though. He was so good at gi giving you confidence. And um, yeah, and then he, uh, one time he pulled me in his office and he was like, We'd, we'd just been promoted to the Premier League and we had Spurs away. Um, and I, I got injured at the time and I just started back and he went, right, um, you're playing tomorrow. And I did, I, really, to be honest, I, I, I forgot who was playing. How old was you? I was 17, Wow. I think. And he was like, you're playing tomorrow. And uh played against Mickey and Edgar Davids and your brother scored the, uh, oh, the, volley. the, the um, equaliser at White Lane. We weren't the then, was it? What no, was I think it was a header. Header. Yeah. Like in the eighty eighth minute, it was wow. unreal. Yeah. So that and as you say, that's how quick your life changes as a as a player. Mm. Steve. Steve, come in, man. Hi everyone. Um, I'm just enjoying listening, actually, to be fair. It's good to to get another insight at the table. Um, I got we give David Moyes a bit of grief on here, and some of it's justified, United fan angle, you can understand. But clearly, he's getting something right. You guys finished the highest, I think you might have finished, certainly in your career, at West Ham last season. You currently, if you finish where you are now, you, it'll be, again, the highest place you've ever finished. You are pushing for a top four spot. I want to know what David Moyes has got right. You've gone through you know, nearly 10 managers. What's he got right that the others didn't? Um, uh, A few things. I think we've got some... Uh, I think our signings have been really good. We've we've been lucky enough to have Deck come through the academy, and and hit uh, form like he has done, which is which has been phenomenal. Uh, Jared Bowen coming in has been fantastic for us. Like um, there was questions about him when he first signed from Hull City, whether he can do it in the Premier League. I think he's proven that now to everyone, um, and I still see he can go he can go further on, as in he can get better. Um, we we got I say lucky, but we we signed a couple of really good players in the Czech boys that mm. are strong, athletic, um, perfect for, for for what David Moyes wants. And I think he 
uh, Rhi, I don't know how, how he was when you worked with him, but I think he's um, he knows how to set up a team to to keep clean sheets and, and counter attack. And with the likes of Jared and Mikel and uh, Fornells and uh, Saeed, the players we've got. We was perfect for that, and and sometimes it works, doesn't mm. it? Sometimes you get a a flow, and it and it really works. And it's uh it's been a fantastic couple of seasons under him. Declan Rice, um, you've mentioned him. When it comes to the way he retains information, surely he must have a gift there because we see him. He's joking around, etc. But when he's on the pitch, the focus is it's next levels, man, for the club and for England. Um. I think I think he's gone from strength to strength. Obviously, I think we've all seen that, how good he is now. I've been saying it for years, but mm. people was questioning about whether he passed forward enough. And um, but I think he's took his game to the next level now. I think I think he proved that in the Euros, especially in the final. I think you, I thought for seventy five minutes he was the best player on the pitch. Um, and I thought I've said it for a long time. I still I actually still think he's going to get better. I still think he can score more goals. I still think he can uh, create more, create more for the team. He does, he does an incredible job for us, uh, sweeping up and interceptions. But he's also really good when you're going forward. You, we see it in training how good he is at finishing and how 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 technically good he is. Um, so for it, for me, he's, he is, um, and you can say it when you've played when you've played with or you played against and you've played with good players, you can tell straight away whether they're a little bit different and. Um, he he's got he's got he's got everything all round. Well, you say different. Give us a bit of insight. What's what's different about him that you've seen with other midfielders you've played alongside or or, or against? Do, Reed, you know what? It's like I don't know whether when you went from West Ham to Leeds to, to United and, and and gradually you play with better players, but do you know like just the way in training, like someone takes the ball? Do you know what I mean? Like is in when you're pressing or. Um, when you're watching and the way they they move with the ball, and um, I don't know whether you've seen in the last, especially the last six months, Harry, he, Harry's he improved his game where he drops the shoulder and he drives past mm. you, and um, he just looks on another planet when he does that because he's so physically strong and powerful that you you can't catch him, mm. um, and that's what I mean by he, he does that so well now. And when he when he gets into the outside the box and because he's 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 striking of the ball is top top notch that he can even score more goals and um i'm, I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll bring that to his game because he's uh he keeps learning you mentioned about um he could, he's bringing this to his game he can score more he can be more creative etc even more than what he's doing now you as a senior player do you want him about stuff like that yeah he's i think he said in an interview the other day that knows even now when i do something in training he's still on me but when I look, when I look at his game, and when I watch him, I watch him play, and I watch him in training, that I never had his strength and his legs, and I never had that. I could, I could play, but I never had that sort of power. So, for me, watching on, um, if he becomes, and I, and I still think he's one of the best in the world at it now. But if he becomes like the Steven Gerrard mold, where he's getting 10, 12 a season from that position. And, and 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 that in assist as well. Then you, you you got you're going on to be a top top one of the best in the world. Because there ain't many now that do that box to box. Is no, it? no, that's and what you, I'm saying. You're you, you, like you a holder. Yeah, or you you're get, an attacking midfielder. Yeah, I say that all the time in the academy. You get stuck in a position now. You're a number four or you're number eight. You're like you know that like when I first got into the for the, the first team at West Ham and we played like United or Chelsea and um, like. Gerard would get the ball off the back four and within two minutes he'd be like scoring in the yeah, six yeah. yard box you know like and you just don't you don't really get that anymore you play against Yaya Torre and he was the same um Scolzi was the same he done, he done, he done the same he, he was the same sort of player and obviously Stevie G Lamps and even Balak when he was at Chelsea big strong powerful boys that that played played both positions like mm. they was they, they'd sweep up in front of the back four but also then they'd again get on the end of a cross and score mm. and um I don't think that happens quite as much in the game anymore because um people in the academy get get sort of stuck in a position and mm. and they learn that 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 position only it's weird because we knew you was coming on it's not weird but we knew you was coming on so I text Declan to um said to him you got any you got anything on nobs and to be fair, you can see the respect levels because there's nothing, there's nothing jokey, there's no messing really? about. He says nothing new at the moment, mate. He's the best, bro. He's like my second dad. 
Hard to explain, but he's the best and is still a top player. Top three trainer every day. Never gives the ball away. And one of the best passes I've ever seen. It's nice, that, isn't it? You've, wow. I've, to, I've told him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but as I said, as you said before, you don't, you don't, it's not like the training games and that. That's fine. That's You can deal with that. It's like having to, the game's moved on now. The game's yeah. physically strong and powerful. You see the boys now, they're just, a lot of them are, are freaks and um, at the age of, I'll be 35 in May. And I've always said, like, I, I want to go out when when it's my decision. Mm. Do you know what I mean, really? Like, mm. not, I don't want to be told by an agent or a, or a club, say, do you know what? Like, you're done, That's really. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, your legs are gone. <laughs> um, like I did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was mad going to QPR from uh, Man I was. You shouldn't. Yeah. I was. It's one of the you, worst decisions I've ever made. Yeah, yeah, because you realise what it's actually like yeah. at that level. You right? know what it is, though? You can't give it up. Like, I'm sitting there going, I'm... I'm the year before that, I, I, we won the league at United. I was in the player, uh, team of the year, the Premier League. David Moyes comes. It all goes a bit peak tongue, which is fine. And you think, I could still, I ain't finished. I can't be. There's another yeah. chapter. There's got to be. But it's like a, an old boxer, isn't it? You get, yeah, everyone yeah. else is going, you've got to retire. His legs are gone. He, his chin's gone, yeah. etc. But, but I think, I think, Reed, the thing is, I think you get labelled as soon as you like hit like 33, 34, mm. you're like, oh, he's, like he's gone. Yeah. But it's not... As, as Dex said, it's not like the training because it's not like full pace and, you know, you ain't doing like 100 metre strides and all that. You, you're fine. That's, you never lose that technical ability. But like with you, when I'm, I remember seeing you at QPR and that, and I'm thinking <laughs> it's just that like skulls and like the boys, Carrick, yeah, yeah, Carrick, yeah, yeah, and Carrick. where you just go five yards, go on, boys, deal with it. Do yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and no one really can get close to you but to then go into a, a, a team that is not quite as good, obviously. And you got to, yeah, you got to defend, mate. <laughs> yeah. You got geezers like running in behind, and yeah, yeah. and it's just like, pfft. and you ain't got the ball. No, no, that's what I'm saying. But really, it's not even mm. that. It's like for me, like now, I, I, as I said, I've I've watched on for the last year and played played a few games, and um, and you've looked good when you've come. Yeah, in. and 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 that's fine, really, because the recovery at 34 is different when you're yeah. 21. Yeah, yeah. Like you come off a pitch and you have got a bruise on your like you've got dead leg or saying, and when you're 22, 21, that's gone within two days. You're After fine. After a night out, and an all mate, day mate, and then, <laughs> Yeah, and you feel brand new, don't you? And then now, you get like a kick, and, and it ain't, it's still there three weeks later. And it's just like, but it's just your age. That's that's what happens. And um, and I've always said to myself, because I've been at West Ham for so long, and I've I've, I've played season after season, and, and a lot of them seasons have been relegation battles where you got to, try and drag the boys with you, you know, constantly every day. You can't feel sorry for yourself. It's, it's non-stop. Have you always took that upon yourself to be the one that's dry, dragging people, you, driving the training? It, what, do you, just, what are you like in the training ground then? Uh, uh, Don't let my questions, Rio. <laughs> do you know what? It's, I've been really lucky, Rita. I've never had uh, too, so many bad injuries. You know what I mean? So I'm out there every day training mm. with the boys and, and driving the session. And um, and I've been really lucky to have some some great pros at West Ham in the last 10 years like um what's driving a session to Mark Noble though tell me the details it's not really it don't have to be like everyone thinks it's about shouting and screaming at people like for me that only happens every now and then when when someone's taking liberties you know what I mean mm -hmm. but the, the thing the thing for me is if you do it if I if I'm the captain of the club and I'm doing it and I'm and I'm uh setting the setting standards. the standards higher you know what I mean for everything like no matter what, then how can a player turn around and go, I'm not doing that? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, f thank, thank God, like, lucky enough, I've played over 400 Premier League games for the club. And if I'm still doing it, like, if I'm still, if, if I'm not playing on a Saturday and, and the boys are running on the pitch after, like, I'm not going to go, no, I ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm doing that because then they can't moan. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? The, the boys that don't want to, yeah, don't want to do what, don't want to, don't want to train on a Sunday because, We've won three new on a Saturday and they haven't come on and they've got the ump. But if I'm out there on the pitch running after the game, then then so should they be. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's how I've always, always tried to lead by by example. Mm -hmm. Mark, you must have seen probably thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of players that you must have trained with throughout your career. Is there one trait or one characteristic that you see in that makes people be successful? Is there any players that are getting to the top as well as tossing it off, or is it just no? Everyone that makes it is, has got that dedication and, and commitment in training. 
Uh, if I'm honest, no, because some players are terrible in training. Tevez. Tevez. <laughs> I've always said Tevez. Yeah, Did some, you it, it was a, to be honest, Ree, really, he was like the levels were different at United and West Ham, mm. obviously, but like there was, it was like he sort of saved his legs for the weekend. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, but yeah. he was, he was still so good. It come into him and he'd be really tight and bang, bang, bang. But it wasn't like unreal every day. You, no. Not as good as he could be, obviously. Mm. But put him on the pitch on a Saturday, mate. It was like an animal. He's one of your first picks in the starting eleven yeah. on a Saturday. But during the week, I didn't want him on my team. Really. No, wow. but but that's but you get players that um, that that yeah. in training they're just like, oh, like I don't know whether it it doesn't give that them that enthusiasm and the hunger. And then you put him on a pitch on a Saturday, and you're like, mate, where is this fella come from? Who, you know who, else? I mean? who else? But then it'd be the opposite. It'd be the opposite where in training you think. I'm real. Like he's got to play. The gaffer has to play him, and then you play, and it'd be honking, and you think, like, "How does that work out?" Do you know what I mean? It's just the way. But ninety percent of the time, it's the players that that do the do the the basics right, do the, do the correct things, and look after themselves. That that have long careers. Do you know what I mean? That that actually, yeah, right. You can go out of a night out and all that, but then during the week they're at it like full stop, and then for the game they're they're at it again. Who else then? So you you said Tevez, bit, what, bit was, shaky in training. Um, even like someone like Andy Carroll, like it wasn't, he wasn't like obviously Andy's different player to to like, but he wouldn't get involved in much in the keep balls and all that. But like you done a session where you was crossing the ball, like defenders, mate. You just don't want to do that <laughs> because you know he's coming at some point yeah. and. And you know you're going to get an elbow in the back of the head and he's going to smash it in with his head and you think... But when he first signed for us, Andy, um, I was actually quite shocked how... Because obviously Andy's always known for how good he is in the air, do you know what I mean? But then when he come to us and there was there was games where like the board come up from the goal kick and he'd just like pin the centre off, bring it down his chest, lay it off. And I thought, no, nah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's got a lot more than... than um, than just uh, heading, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was actually yeah. technically, uh, but that was on a Saturday. And this, on, after, I don't think in a week. After, if, you, if you ask him yourself, I don't think he said, oh, "I don't care." <laughs> I actually, don't, he just wants a banter and have a laugh. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. then you put him in, you put the boy in the box on a Saturday, and he's coming for everyone to get it, mm -hmm. like defending and attacking, and that's why he was, he was so valuable to teams. Did you, did you, you played with some great technicians? Uh, did you play with Di Canio? No, at all. You missed no, him. Trained, but didn't play. So you train with someone like Di Canio. Um, you've got some of the lads there now who are really talented players, but then obviously the, the, Dimitri Payet as well. Where does he rank in the, the top players you've played with? That season he had was phenomenal. Like, Re, he was... Do you know when you actually... There's only a certain amount of times in, in, in training and games where you just think, wow, like, that is nuts. I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> you know, you think, why can't I do that? It looks so easy. <laughs> um, but... He was just so good, mate, at times. And um, obviously, we all know about his free kicks, but in training at times and in, in games, you do things where you just think, wow, like he's a, he's another level. And um, it's just in, that in, in games, he would change him himself. Mm. You know, he'd, he's one of them that you think, oh, do you know what? We actually need to score now. So I'm going to do something. And, and that was that was how good he was at times. And... Um, that's that's he's 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 probably one of the reasons that that season under Slav and the last season and at the bowling we 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 done so well because he was just uh, on another level. Obviously, you spent your entire career at West Ham, and and I'm assuming unless anything changes next seven hours, that's probably going to change. Not going to change. What was the closest you came to being tempted away? Um, probably probably when we got relegated. Um, I was, of, I think it's only 24, 25 at the time and um, sat, sat, sat with my wife and uh, my family and said, like, what should we do? You know, like, um, but I made, I made the decision. My, like, I'm quite a, a home person, so is my wife. And I just thought um, what a story it would be to, to stay and, and, and get promoted in the first season, get back straight away. And um, because... Sometimes um, you can make a rash decision in football. I've seen it so many times with players where they think, oh, we've got really good. I want to go. I want to do this. And and the grass is just sometimes not greener. A lot of the time it's not greener. You end up floating around and going to a club and um, not saying it, it wouldn't have worked. Maybe if I if I jumped ship uh, 
it might have worked out better. But for me, um, being at home and uh, being around my family and my kids and uh, was a massive, massive thing for me. So decided to stay and and looking back now, it's the right decision. I think all West Ham fans would be happy with that and happy answered and stayed anyway. England, there were a good number of years where you was in the form of your life and your name was tied about to get in the England squads at times and it never materialised. Um, how do you feel about it? And do you feel you deserved an opportunity? Uh, Before I th- you answer, I think you deserved an opportunity at some point, the way you were playing for a number of years. I do think that. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I deserved an opportunity mm-hmm. like to, to actually to, to go and, and, and be involved because I, I, I do believe that and you, when you play, when you when you play with better players, it makes you a better player yourself. Mm. Um, and I was, I think I'd scored eight goals in that that last season, and 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 got a lot of assists. And we was fourth or fifth in the league at the time, and even the season before that. Um, but I've always said, and people might think, oh yeah, all right, whatever. You just saying that because you didn't you didn't get into the England team but it wasn't that for me I when I was a kid I dreamed about playing for West Ham mm. like I, dream, I wanted to play for West Ham and that, that was the team I supported and England obviously was a was a wild dream um but once I once I, I, I played for West Ham and you get that taste of uh playing in front of fans and um and then after two or three seasons where I, I played really I was playing really well and I, I didn't get didn't get picked then I wasn't really. How do I say? I, I, it, I was over it, really. You know, really like no, it never really because I'd never tasted it. So mm-hmm. obviously, I, pl- I captained the under twenty ones. Yeah, it? played at played at all the levels. Captain under twenty ones, and um, and then obviously when I first broke into the West Ham team, and and you, you, the, the the squad you had then with um, Skulls, Lampard, Gerrard, and they were struggling to get all three of them in the team Carrick at times. Carrick, yeah, yeah, you know, like, and he wasn't getting picked. And I just thought there was absolutely no chance. Like, but um, looking back, I don't, it's not, it's not really a regret because there, there is loads of players that's played for England, loads of players that have mm-hmm. worn England and got caps that have not had the career I've had at, in the Premier League. Do you know what Good I mean? Way to look at that. Yeah, and that's, that's the way I see it. I think um, there's, there's, there's loads and loads of players that have moved around from clubs to club and, um, and had a, a few England caps that people wouldn't really know. You know what I mean? Mm. So I've always looked at it like um, I've played an incredible amount of games for West Ham and uh, and, and and had a career that I'd, ne- I'd never even thought I'd have. So um, when you, I mean, you can't have everything. So when you look at it like that, it's um, it's a massive achievement for me and my family. What, what's it like for Mark Noble to walk around like West Ham areas? Are you, is it all right or is it Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? It's It's... It works both ways. It? You think like, when you go to a petrol station and and you and and the team are having one and and you, and you fall from bottom and you're like the geezer's got got his uh his apron on and he's serving the croissants and that he's going no what's happening mate over there <laughs> and, like, and I'm like oh, mate I don't know I like, try my hardest yeah. <laughs> and then and then you you've had one on the weekend and you you've got beat and then. Carly's like, Mark, like, just fancy going out for dinner. I'm like, oh, babe, do you know what? I don't even want to speak to anyone. And that's mm. how you get really, you've, you've obviously had it like bigger when with England and all that when you come back. And but it's, it's, it can be amazing. The one thing when I, when I missed the penalty against United, I don't know whether you see the interview I'd done. Um, it was, it was Carly's birthday the next day. And you can imagine what I was like, mate. I was mm. like, I felt sick. So I went home that night and, and I'd booked Sushi Samba to go with Carly and the kids the next day. <laughs> Woke up and she's she's all getting, the Carly's getting ready with the kids and I'm thinking it's the last thing I want to do. Like, I don't want to see anyone. <laughs> you know what I mean, I just want to train on Monday and just get out because yeah. like, we played United on the Wednesday night. And uh, drove up to the station. We was getting, this, the train's only 20 minutes from there and uh, I was getting a ticket for my car. And the geezer come over <laughs> and he had like, he was, he had the T- TFL stuff yeah. like the train driver. <laughs> And I thought, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> mate, I thought he was going to crack a joke or go on, mate. I thought, oh, what, what happened yesterday? And, uh, <laughs> and he was like, Mark, listen, I, I don't want to, like, can listen, you're, like, I've been to uh, Iraq, like, two or three times, Afghanistan and all that. He said, like, um, you're my inspiration and all that. Really, dummy, bro. Wow. Dummy. Yeah, like, proper dummy. And I was like, he said, do you mind if I have a picture? And as I'm having a photo with him, it, like, he's shaking. And I just thought, 
why am I worried about missing a pen? I've mm. scored like 40 pens. Well, your conversion rate, it's I've just got it here. In 2020, stats. Mark was rated as the player with the second highest conversion rate at penny kicks in the world over the last 20 years. 90.5% conversion rate, only beaten by Mr. Robert Lewandowski himself. Yeah, I think I went ahead of him though. Did you? He missed one and then he and then I missed and he scored. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for about two weeks I was first. <laughs> but yeah, like and I and then I said to Carly, I said, babe, honestly, like it made me emotional, really, like mm. proper emotion. I thought the skis is out fighting wars and, and getting shot at, and I'm like sulking over a missed pen. Mm. Um it made me feel a lot better. And obviously I, I didn't know who he was, I was gutted. I di- and then I I managed to get in contact with him through obviously social media through West Ham and and hosted him at one of our games. So it was a wow. massive moment, yeah. Do you know what? It's good to hear like the emotion and the, the feeling and the care because mm. a lot of players in today's game and this generation get tarnished with that brush. That, oh, they don't care as much. There's too much money in the game. But it's just nice to hear that other side that it does affect your weekend if you don't play well, or you miss a penalty or you don't get the three points. It does affect your, your home life and family life because you care so much. Yeah, but Reed, like I've said this before and I, this is not, I'm not, not because I'm a West Ham fan and I've played for West Ham all my life. I've, I, I'd be the same if I played for any club. That, like, it don't matter whether you've you've won on a set. Say we've beat Manchester United on a Saturday afternoon, right? Saturday night for a couple of hours, you're still buzzing. Mm. After that, wears off. You think, right, we've got to win the weekend, otherwise we're back in trouble, mm. right? But then you got you're out on a Wednesday night having sank to eat with a wife or your mates or whatever, and you're eating. You feel like, what's that thing in your belly? Mm. Like, you, and you think. Oh, mate, I hope we win on Saturday. You know, like you, I've had that for twenty years, and and I promise you, in my life, I've never had a, a moment where I'm like total at ease because mm. I always care so much about the result of the weekend. Uh, whether even in the summer, you go away in the summer and you think, oh, lovely, I've got six weeks off, but then after two weeks, you think, can't eat no more shit, gotta can't drink fit. anymore, gotta get, <laughs> gotta get fit, and then it hurts. You know, yeah, like you yeah. think, well, I've got to be ready for the season, and then it's just non-stop. And look, people say, oh, yeah, well, look, I'll, I'll do that for the money you've earned and all that. But it's not as easy as that. It's, mm. Yeah. And, 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 and also, like, um, there's only a certain amount of people in, in the world, obviously, that can play at that level. Do you know what I mean? You got, and, it, and there's players, many players in the years that I think could have played at that level, but didn't do the, the, the correct things, didn't live their life like that. And, and, uh, and 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 didn't 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 make it. So it's uh when you when you get to the level that Rio's played at myself that you you need to live by it every day because if you don't you'll have a couple of great years and then you start falling by the wayside. Um, taking it back to that Man United penalty, did you when you got asked to come on? Did you have the belief that you know what I'm just going to come on and I'm just going to win yeah. the game? And you know there was I mean? no other thing in my mind. I just I was just I was I, it was it was mad because. I'd actually thought about it in the past. I thought, what about if we get a last minute pen? Because I know I'm, I wasn't in the team. So mm-hmm. I think, what about if we get a last minute pen and we're drawing or we're losing? We're like, I wonder if the gaffer will bring me on. So it happened against United. And I'm thinking, he's going to bring me on. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I was buzzing, really. I was like, I can't, I can't wait to get on, Geese. Sh- hey, the, group, the group chats were like, yeah, he's got this. Mate, like, do yeah, you know what? I, was, I could not wait to get on the pitch to take yeah. it. And I remember watching... Uh, the Euros in in the summer and I took my little boy to the final. Mm. And you know, because of TikTok and social media and Instagram and all that and football's coming home, Lenny's like 11, right? And he loves footy. But he was like, lovely dad, we've won the Euros. And I'm like, Len, we ain't, we ain't won, we've got to play the final. He's like, yeah, but football's coming home. Like, but yeah. really, he had nothing else <laughs> in his mind. Yeah. There was like, because he was so young, he was like, we won. Mm. And, and that's what I was like. I was like, I've scored, no problem. Wow. And, um, I always look back now. I see. Uh, I just think of David. Yeah, and I, I, the only the joy I get out of it, I was thinking he was going for a rough time at the, at the time. <laughs> it made him feel better anyway. <laughs> You've got him back to being number you know one what? keeper. Do you know what, mate? Honestly, I remember when I missed. Obviously, I think it was shock, and United countered right, and I've just done a full blown sprint back to the eighteen yard box, and got the ball off Fabianski and like on the edge of my box. Right, mm. I know it's mad. I was thinking, what was I doing? Like, I, I should have just stood there. And yeah, just, yeah. Just, but I think it was just a reaction and, uh, and shocked. And then there yeah, after, I was just like, just felt sick, mm. you know. Like, and I was laying in bed that night, and I was thinking, nah, this ain't real, man. I'm gonna, I, I like, 
I'm going to take it again. <laughs> why didn't he dive the other way? Or why didn't I put it the other way? It's just what goes through your head. Mm. He did well. He did well. Steve? Yo, um, nice to hear what you said about the soldiers as well. I did Afghanistan and Iraq myself. Um, and I actually came back from Iraq straight to Old Trafford for the Champions League semi in uh, 2008. And the feeling goes both ways because the one thing to take your mind off what's going on while you're over there is football in a massive way. Just you know, whatever regiment or battalion that you're with, there's someone that supports everyone. So there's just arguments about football. It's like every group chat you've ever been in, but in real yeah. life with nothing else to do, really. Well, some of us. Yeah, but it does. It does. It does put. It does put football in 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 you. You put it in a in a way where you like. like uh, it does matter. Of course, it matters to the fans and it matters to the points on the board. But when you look at it's not life or death, not life or death. Mm -hmm. and and this this the, the, this this train driver at the time, um, he was so sincere in the, what what he said that I was like it, it it proper hit me deep down, which goes I oh, missed the pen. Yeah, great. Like just take it on the chin, deal with it. You know, like, there's a lot worse things happening in the world. And then when something someone actually tells you about that. It, it it's uh it hit it, it's home hard and um yeah it was a massive ma massive turning point for me that in in my beliefs with with football and and what's going on around the world. The um the Dan Garner sale, uh, I think you probably got a lot of credit for this from West Ham fans by speaking your mind on this. Or did it affect your relationship with the club at all by coming out and saying what you said? No, but I think a lot of people took uh. How do I say? Like you look at you look at uh, Twitter and all that now, and 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 players miss penalties and uh, and do a free page apology to the fans. You know, like I don't I don't I don't I don't understand all that uh, myself. Just take it on the chin and deal with it. But with with something like that, what why why I'd done that was because we'd. Uh, We'd, we'd gone we've gone for a, t a tough season and, and and we'd survived and uh just to clarify this is when you came out and you you was like against the club selling him yeah no it wasn't it was about re for me it was about uh and i know obviously football is a business i know that better than anyone and sometimes you got to make decisions when you when you when you own a football club that that helps a football club but we'd just been away on pre-season we'd, we'd we'd stayed up um in 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 the premier league when 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 Moise come back and um we had a great feeling in pre-season and mm. I, and I, I actually thought you know what we're actually going to be all right this year this is going to be a good season you can feel it can't you mm. you know and um and grady was so good in training um and i thought he's going to i'm i'm telling you now he's going to be if he stays with us and he plays with with better players he's going to be a 40 50 million pound player in a few years because mm. he had that much ability um and then, uh, and then, obviously, everything that happened, and he, he come to me and he said, like, Mark, like, I think, like, I, I really don't want to go. Like, I want, I want to be at West Ham. I want to stay here. And, um, and, uh, but I think uh, West Brom had a, we had a, bit, we bit, we accepted a bid from West Brom because I think Slavan really wanted him. And um, I just thought at that time, um, it was good to keep homegrown players around the place. We had we had a great one in deck, and we had another great one in in Grady that we've brought through the academy, and and I know sometimes you have to turn a profit. I really do understand that, um, but at that time I thought he was he was going to be a massive asset to us. And if you look back now, um, obviously we've we've done great. So maybe I was wrong to to say it, but I I do believe that he was he was going to be a top top player and um, and 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 be a massive player for for the club. So. Um, yeah, that was my that was why I'd done it. Another long serving player at your club is Antonio, Mikel Antonio. Great character. You've seen him come out this season. He's really good with the media. Uh, what would you say has been his good for him like at West Ham? What's made him such a success in the period of time that he's been there? Um I think it was really tough for him when he first came. Mm -hmm. Really tough for him. He he was he was he wasn't near the team. Um and then I think we got a few injuries and uh Slavin put him in at right back. Mm. Um and he was just he, he was unreal. He was mm. he was a he was a joke at right back. He was so quick and strong and mm. um he, he, he you just couldn't beat him. 
Um, and then, uh, obviously, Sl Slavan went and uh, a few things. I think Pellegrini come in and he, he didn't really fancy him. Mm. They, um, but Mika's Mika's always had an unbelievable resilience to just keep on playing. And and, uh, and for me, he's one of the most improved players I've ever I've ever come across. Um, and the, and and his his record his record is second to none there. And for us in the Premier League, he's been he's been phenomenal. And with the injuries he's had as well, to even get back from them and and keep on uh, keep on playing, um, he's been fantastic. And you look at for us over the last three or four years, he's just we ain't been able to we can't replace him because mm -hmm. to to go and get another meet, you're gonna have to spend a lot a lot of money, and you're not even guaranteed that now. So uh, we brought obviously big Seb in and. Uh, and try to go a different way, but um, you couldn't you couldn't take Mick out of the team because he was too good. Is that, is that down to the hard work as well? Obviously, he's got to have an element of talent. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but he's got a but really good at work ethic. Yeah, like as in he's 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 one of the same. Really, like he's he's improved massively over the years, but um, with his pace and his power and uh, his strength, like you see so many centre halves. <laughs> I don't know whether you had it the same, but when you're uh, you come up with bigger against a big strong center half who, who's got a bit of an ego and thinks they're the strongest man in the world. Like you try and muscle Mick and it's not going to happen. Let me tell you, because he's just too strong. He's he's got a low center of gravity. He ain't obviously six foot five, but he's uh, he's so strong and he, oh, he yeah and he just uh, he just brushes you out of the way. And the goals he scored for us has been uh, he's been phenomenal and he's a massive reason why we're we're still in the Premier League now. Yeah. Let me just throw it back to when West Ham the academy. That was what it's always called when we used to be coming through the academy. Mm. All the coaches used to tell you that. Um, some great coaches there. Paul Heffer's still there. Paul he coached me as a kid. I yeah. went, I'm, oh, I'm wow. where I played against West Ham a few weeks ago, months ago. He was on the sidelines still. Yeah. I was amazed. So he probably he definitely coached you as well. But going back to the academy and the young players that come through there, the likes of me, Frank, Joe Cole, Carrick, Glenn Johnson, you, my brother, Defoe. There's loads of players that we can keep going on with. Yeah. And I always say this, and you get in the taxi taxis around London, half of them are West Ham fans. Yeah. Oh, if we kept you lot together, we'd have been yeah. and all that. And it, that could have been true. But mm. fast forward to where we are now, is there any more that we can see? Declan just come from yeah, Johnson. You look at, you look at, uh, like, I, I, don't, I think it's about, I don't know, about five million quid, they say it is to, to run your academy for a year, West Ham's mm -hmm. academy. And you've got a lot of staff members that work incredibly long hours to 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 support these boys and you and, and every academy in the country is the same you've got you've got one or two special kids along the way and the rest really a support or a supporting cast for mm. for them you know to, to 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 go on and do things we've got if you obviously you named the players you, you've just named but you have a look at in the last three or four years, as in Grady, you have a look at Deck, Ben Johnson, and Gakia that's come through. I think we played eight young kids in the Europa League at one point mm. this season. Um, we've got some top young young talent that's come through, and will still come through. And then we've got obviously I'm I mean I'm I'm at the academy at the time. My son's there, and you know, I see the boys train and two or three under sixteens that are. Um, mm. And they look like they they could they could uh, make that next step, but being able to cope with the pressures. You've seen, really, I've seen some top top players come even come to the twenty threes, and then all of a sudden fall by the wayside because the manager's watching, and they come up with a first team, and Pressure. they've been yeah, and they've and they've also been spoke to nicely for five or six years. Like it ain't like Tony Carr used to like absolutely rattle you if you weren't doing it right and Youth team manager. It, yeah mm. it's, it's it's different now and because the you, it's only a certain amount of things you can do you agree with that i, I for me personally i don't know if people say you're old school mm. I, I don't i think because if you come to our us if you are good enough to come and train with us and you don't track your runner or you don't keep the ball and uh I'm going to tell you, and then and then so will the manager, and so will ten of the other players because mm. it means so much. You know what I mean? Um, it, was, it was funny the other day I, in the gym. I was watching under 16s, and I was standing there watching, and um, that there was playing a five aside in the uh, eight aside in the gym or whatever, and one of the boys in the midfield lost it, and uh, 
just someone took it off him and just and he just like shrugged it off and walked back. And I'm like, fuck, hey, fucking run back. What's up with you? <laughs> and he's like, coach, like, oh mate, you can't do that here, mate. I'm like, what? Two years time, I'll tell him. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that's that that's the way it is. I can't and... get my head around that. I can't. I, that's probably why. I can't work at a football club. Maybe I couldn't but, accept the stuff. Yeah, like that. maybe. Like I, d- I don't know. You, you have got, you, you've got, to, you've got to tread carefully now. And but that is not, that's not, the, that's not real football. That's not the real world. And and obviously, you're still going to get players come through that can handle it. Of course, like Dick and the boys that are coming through. But um, you're setting up, you're setting up 99 percent of them to fail if you don't treat them the way they're going to get treated in the workplace, which is the first thing: dressing room. If they're not used to it, yeah, you're going to lose more than you keep. Yeah, because it's a horrible industry. Yeah. yeah, like it's horrible. It's like if you don't make the cut, that's it. You're gone. And like for, for parents, Rio does it. I do it with my boy. Like Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, Saturday morning. If I didn't have my dad, I'd be knackered because Same I still way. play. Mm. So he does uh, uh, Saturday mornings. It could be away at, in Nottingham on a Sunday, mm. right? And then by the time you get to 15, the club goes, "Sorry, you're not good enough," and you've just spent thousands and thousands and spent ruined weekends and time been in cars mm-hmm. and, and left work early and then the club turn around and go ah, sorry you're not good enough so but to be fair that's where football's going because when we we had on Mick Phelan uh, earlier on in the summer and he said to me and Steve that it's a collaboration with the players now I can't lie I didn't understand it in it I thought collaboration is that what you see when you go and you see your boys as well a collaboration yeah. there, there's listen it's is- all bad there's good points as well mm. they, they're, yeah, they're given course. so much information yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, mm. they're given every single possibility to make as a player now there's no stone left unturned the detail that i put into these kids is phenomenal and you want all that but i just feel that sometimes there's the heart it started in my generation when youth team players just after my generation weren't allowed to clean boots anymore mm. and then you're thinking to yourself yeah but that's part of where the camaraderie starts and <laughs> where the hardening of young players comes where you're sitting there thinking I can't go home till four o'clock because I've got to clean the first team's boots. I've got to wait for them to dry, to put dubbing on them and the black polish to get them on so they're sparkling for the morning for the first team players so they don't shout at me. Yeah. They're all character building things that that part of the character and the resilience that Mark's talking about soon will be like, it might be out of most of these players and it's only the ones from maybe particular backgrounds or, yeah. or have been built with the foundations in their house, luckily, that are going to be able to survive. So you're going to lose more than you get through. That's a desire issue then for me, I reckon. Definitely. Yeah, but even even me now, like you asked you asked the lads, the, the, a lot of the foreign boys don't get it, but mm. like no matter every away game we go to now, um, or every away game we play, whether we win, lose, or draw, I sweep the change room after the game. Wow. So yeah, yeah so it's spotless. Like Bro, and I didn't do that. <laughs> and, and and some of the boys are like, Mark, like you what are you doing? You like this, especially the the the, the foreign boys. Are like, is that to show them? Is that to show? Yeah, them? no, that's to show them. I I do it because really, I think for me, like if you go away to United, right, and they score in the last minute of the game, like they did last week, uh, the staff that you know better than anyone, like at West Ham, the staff that have worked there for 30, 40 hurt, years, man. right, that that go in the dress, go in our dressing room after, and this all all the milkshakes are tidied up the the uh, the, the bottles are cleared the, the grass is all swept it's all Strapping. it's yeah everything's gone it's spotless it's like this here um they go car what a club west ham is mm. you know what i mean like like pu- they've lost the game in the last minute heartbroken but still had enough respect to to sweep the change room after and and leave it spotless and um about How many of them know that it's mark noble sweeping the floor who like the these, these away I don't I, it don't it doesn't bother me but but now when now if, if we have young boys travel with us um they see me do it so now sometimes we if I've done the press or I'm I'm running outside as I walk in the young boys have got the broom sweeping the dressing room I love that I but love I, that. I and that's that's not because I've told them to that's because if they see me doing it like what I said you then then why shouldn't they do it mm. and it's just something that I think should be done. I, I remember walking in the dressing room about ten years ago when I was when uh, I left my ring in the dressing room uh, at, a, at an away game, and I, I asked one of the staff to take me back to the dressing room to get it. And that, when I walked in, it was like I just felt embarrassed, you know, like mm. empty milkshakes everywhere, poured out grass everywhere, empty water bottles, strappings, all that stuff. I just thought this is like it's no good for West Ham like this, mm. and and that's when that's from when I started doing it. 
It's mad because I just hope HR ain't watching and that you're making junkies <laughs> sweep the floors and they stuff. They do it like themselves, that. so don't make it. <laughs> but you know what it is? It's, it's weird because this is how you grew up. That's how I grew up. Yeah. You used to have to wait. And I used to have to wait after at Upton Park when I was at West Ham. I used to have the away dressing room in the first team in, in, at Upton Park after the game. So I don't know, United would play wherever it was. They'd finish and they'd take ages. And I'm sitting there going, my last train's going in yeah. 30 minutes. I need you <laughs> yeah. out of here. Like, but all that pressure, this is all character building. You've got to work out ways in which you're going to get home, ways in which you can rush them out of the stadium so you can get your jobs done. But that stuff there, I think, great grounding for young players. He's definitely better than you because Anton said the other day that when you lost games, you would be kicking water dispensers and that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. No, that happens as well. Yeah. Just to clean up half the other. Oh, man. Uh, Steve, do you want to line up the top five selections for Mark to pick from, please? Yeah, go on, Mark. Give us top five players that you've played with. No goalkeepers. <laughs> is that is that the rules? Yeah. No goalkeepers? No ratings at all. Nah. <laughs> uh, I hate doing this. I really do. I played with because... I'm not, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, but what I'll say to you is uh, if you speak to players, sometimes it's not the biggest names that are the mm. best or it's not it's people. You see people on these shows and they go, oh, who's, who's the, name your top 11? And and it's like they name players that might have played 10 minutes with. You know mm. what I mean? And uh, see, it's hard because sometimes you play with players that are technically not the best, but they chuck themselves in in front of anything for the team, you know, uh, Carlos. Tevez, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ju I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna go for moments. Uh, I'm gonna go for moments, and uh, so Carlos, because when he come to West Ham, he was a joke. Like he, he kept us up that season. Um, Teddy Sheringham. Oh, when, Teddy. When I, when I broke into the team, we played quite a lot of games together, and. Um, like unless you play with someone like that when you when you lost. yeah when Is you it? slap the ball into him and and he he leaves it for you on your right foot yeah. at the right weight on your night tick like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> on your you night tick. To curl it, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Wow. and there was there was times where in training like I remember when I was young I played into him and and he'd like instead of saying it for me he'd like let it pop up so I could hit it on the volley like and he'd go and he'd talk you through it you know like. Just different world. Just his brain was different world, and you know you played the ball into him sometimes, and it was it was a bad ball. Yeah, it yeah. make it look it make it look like it was a good ball. Wow. He'd lay it off, and then he'd give you a little look yeah. to say next time. Yeah, yeah. Time. seriously. Yeah, yeah. He had he had a horrible side to him yeah, didn't yeah, he, as well. Yeah. He was hard to play against. Him. Really, yeah, Teddy was a hard, good player. Man. He was wow. he was he was top, and even like it, I don't know, up from the from the back, and it come to him and. Like the way he'd cushion it with his chest or his head to you yeah, was style. just so like, it was just lovely, you know. Like you never had to break your stride or some he'd done a maths equation in his head that he's that fast and if I lay it there, it's not going to go out of play. Like it's it, I can't, it was, I it can't believe tough. he said on the night tick. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's man. How, that's how good he was. Um, and then I'm that's gonna two. say yeah, uh, deck for one. For, deck's one of them for sure. Mm. Um. Like he's 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 been phenomenal. I've, I've spoken enough about him. Yeah, he, you know what I think. Of him. Yeah. Um, so that's hey, wait, wait, Don't go on as if you haven't seen him saying he could play for United. You've seen yeah, it. Innit? Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah, he gets a lot. Of shit yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get asked a question. Yeah. I've got to be honest and say it. Should United sign him? Yeah. Yeah. They're in for the best. It's like player. you're on a percentage of it, Rio. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You won't mind being on a percentage of that. Yeah. I tell you. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, not. I'm right there with you. Uh, obviously, Dimi. For, for sure, oh, um, and and it, I, I, do you know what? I I haven't actually spoke to him since he left at all. Um, and I, I don't know whether he, he had the ump or whatever, but um, the, the way you, obviously he left, and I don't, I don't I still don't know to this day why he he went like that. I think I don't know whether he had family problems or um, or or had issues like that. But I always thought to myself like if he would have come to me and said. Like Nob's like, listen, something's happened. No matter what it was, it doesn't matter to me that I need to go home to France. I need to, I need to get home. Then I would have done everything in my power to help him because mm. your family is much more important than football. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but he come in one day and and in his mind he was done and that mm. was it. Like training done, didn't want to play anymore and um, and and that was that was hard to take because he was such a great ladder mm. around the place. Um, 
and I just it's a shame that it ended on that note because um I had a lot of lot of time and respect for him and if he would have just come to me and said look Mark I, I need I want to go something's happened then um I would have used all my power at West Ham to to, to try and help that but um in the end he got away and he seems happy where he is mm. so 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 be it. Um, so 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 before Jimmy you needs go, to just call the call the call the vibe with five and yeah. we'll put you back in contact with, with exactly Mark. we'll sort it out. But um you see after that training session, is it tough? Like, is it tough to train after you know your top player? You just randomly it's tough to talk to him. Yeah, right? yeah, no, it, it, honestly, it's 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 the worst thing ever, especially with someone so influential in the dressing room with he was so such a good character. Mm. Um and, and, and do you know what? I understand in, in life stuff happens, of course, with family, with friends, whatever. And, and, and you've got to do whatever you can to, to make that right. Um, but when you're, when you're that good for West Ham and you, you, you're, you're such a big part of the dressing room and, and, and you can just shut it off like that, just completely switch it off. It, it, um, for, for not just for myself, but for all the players, it was, it was really tough to take because, um, for so for so many games, we, we obviously relied on him. But um, look, listen. At the end of the day, <clears throat> he's whatever whatever his reasons were. Um, that he, uh, and if they was to get back and and be with his family, then then so be it. I would have probably done the same thing. Yeah. Number five. We need your fifth one. Uh, do you know what? I'm actually. I'm gonna say I've played with some some great some top players and some. I'm gonna say probably a bit surprised you actually. I'm gonna say Aaron Cresswell. You've always said to me, Cressy. You've, spoken about spoke, your yeah, team. you've yeah, always yeah. spoken really highly of him, mate. Cressy Cressy's one of the most underrated players you'll meet. Like mm. honestly, I I truly believe this, and I, I'd hope to think I'm a, a good judge of a player. Put him with his technical ability and his knowing of the game. Put him in any any team and he'd be sweet. Like, not a problem. Like uh, he's he's got a wonderful left foot. Sees passes. He's got uh, he, he can defend. Um, yeah, for the last for since I've since he signed for West Ham, he's uh, he's he? yeah like and and do you know what? I think everyone realised when he's he was out the last couple of months with a with a back injury realized how much you actually miss him in the mm. team when he's not there he's, he's set play delivery uh, he's crossing his is phenomenal and um he's a top top player so thanks for that you know my last question before these guys get their last question and obviously you're held in high esteem at west ham captain great captain great leader at the club who who was the best leader that you played under good uh good question actually um for, for for I'm going to say for two different reasons, um, uh, Kev and Scotty. Uh, Kev was Kev Nolan, yeah. yeah, Kev Nolan, yeah. He 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 was a he was he was great. Like how can I say he was great in? But I learned a lot from him actually between the manager and and obviously he was he was close with Big Sam, but it, between the lads and. Um, and the manager, he was he was fantastic. The way he ran the dressing room and the way he organised stuff, and he was a, a top captain. And, and then Scotty, for, for for his own reasons, he was a true leader and uh, top top player, and um, and and led by led by example a lot more than as I said to you before by shouting and hollering. He mm. he said what he needed to say, but you knew like every weekend he was going to fly into tackles and. Uh, Technically, a lot better than what people think. He was, he was, he was a top, top player. So, um, yeah, them two. Good. Steve, you got a last question? No, I'm good. I've enjoyed this. I was. A lot of people are going to want to know about Ireland, but should we save that for another day? Well, you know what? I just want. I've got. A, I've got an easy explanation if you want it. Yeah, well, go on. Uh, as I just said to Rio, like when I grew up, I dreamed of playing for West Ham, right? And uh, obviously. Never got picked for England, but I never ever dreamed about playing for Ireland. And my nan and granddad was full Irish, um, and that was no disrespect to Ireland because, um, as I said to you, like I, my, my nan and grand were full Irish. But I always believed that if I if I went and played for Ireland or I got chose to play for Ireland and I and I and I said yes, then 
maybe I might take away a place where a, a, a centre midfield player who is Irish that dreams about playing for Ireland. Um, and that just didn't sit right with me. So my decision was my decision. Well, that's that's, a, nice that's a nice way to end, man. Thank you very much for coming on. And uh, we hope to have you again soon, man. You got anything going on? You got? You, you got can we talk about what you're doing with, uh, you're doing a film or anything like that? As in what? Are you, are you, you got something coming out in a while? A documentary? Yeah. Uh, I think there is something coming out, but I'm not, I, I actually, read my reason for this was because when you, my last season at West Ham, I wanted it not to have a film crew following me around. Do you mm. know what I mean? I want to have a laugh with the boys and be normal. Yeah, and be normal. The last thing I want to do is chuck a camera in front of everyone's face. So I said, if you're going to do it, like do it through my career and you can film the games and all that, but, and that you can spend a little bit of time with me, but I don't want it in front of the, all the players and all that mm. because um, I want to enjoy my last year with the boys and not, not, worry about what I say. Mm, it's true. Well, that's it. Listen, thanks a lot from Mr. Selfless, Mr. West Ham himself. Mark oh, Noble, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, man. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, nice to see you, boys.